Hello, I am High Hill Knight, and welcome to my review of Spectre, the 2015 James Bond movie starring Daniel Craig. I give this movie a C, a firm C. I was very let down by this movie. Uh, I was kind of bored for much of it, um, probably because many other things that I wanted to see didn't happen or didn't happen enough or were just too reliant on the concept of James Bond to make sense in any kind of context, including the world of James Bond. Uh, so I want to talk about the good things because there's only a handful of good things I liked about this. Then I'll get into the many negatives uh, uh, about this. Not every negative because then I'll be going on and on and on, but there are several negatives that I found about this movie um, and I was very uh, let down and disappointed. So let me get into uh, some of the things I liked about it. All right, first of all, the car, you know, James Bond's car. They always got to show up some new car to promote the movie and sell. But the car looks very gorgeous. Uh, there's a very excellent chase scene through the, I believe it was Rome. Uh, and it was pretty nice, pretty cool, and very funny. Uh, a lot of times... Uh, it's a more action oriented with these Daniel Craig movies and comedy, but in this one it was much more comedy based, so it was a nice refreshing change. But uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, the characters of M, I should say uh, Mallory, the, the character that Ralph Fiennes plays, uh, he gets to do more than just stand behind the desk and brood, which was good. Q, and I find it ridiculous that you have this Q character who doesn't give out real gadgets. In this movie, he does give out a gadget, and it's very funny how uh, that transpires, how uh, James Bond gets the gadget and what uh, uh, they talk about, what it does or doesn't do. But still, it's like, come on, what's the point of having the Q character? I mean, I know it's the uh, 21st century. I know that uh, technology is very different, and you need a tech guy there behind the scenes doing things on the computer, just like a Mission Impossible. You have uh, the one character that just spends the majority of his time at a, at a laptop or a computer or some of that. But still, you know, why have the Q character if he's not going to really be making crazy gadgets? Okay, to focus, not to focus on gadgets and, and gizmos and things like that for your uh, series overall, but, you know, I, I want a little more than what we got. We did get something. It's better than nothing, but still, uh, it's certainly better than Skyfall, which is literally a gun and a radio. Uh, so Mallory M gets to do a lot more. Q uh, gets to do a little more money penny. She had a great introduction in Skyfall. And now in this movie, uh, she's not used as much, but still she's used. And you get to see her, her at her home life, which was a uh, very fun and interesting. Uh, so yeah, they, all those characters aren't just uh, there for the quick exposition and set up and bond off you go, which is good. Uh, oh, and even... Uh, classic in uh, Dame Duty Gent. She has a quick uh, cameo, post-mortem cameo as far as her character. James Bond gets uh, instructions from M since upon her death. And it was one of those, well, okay, in case I die here, you do this. So that's what he gets. And that's sort of what sets off this story. Uh, and this movie has an ending, as in, uh, in Skyfall. They sort of re reboot the brand, you know, Casino Royale rebooted the Bond uh, brand, and then uh, Skyfall rebooted the Daniel Craig Bond brand. <laughs> uh, I guess they figured they need to fix things up after there's Quantum Massage, which they definitely did need to do. Uh, but yeah, this movie, uh, James Bond retires again and goes off to hopefully, uh, you know, live happily ever after with this young lady, which doesn't make sense. I'll get to that uh, a little later. But yeah, it does have an ending so that if Craig did walk away, they needed to start with a fresh new bond. You know, it was already set up. They didn't uh, automatically sequel bait with this particular actor. So that's very good. All right. Now, let's get to the bad stuff, or at least the stuff that let me down. Uh, first and foremost, uh, well, first of all, I should say, I don't really like the title. Uh, I mean, I, I know with some Titles are simple in the James Bond lore. I mean, the first one was Dr. No. Uh, 
you know, uh, and there's other simpler titles in the James Bond lore, but I never liked that the title was just Spectre. I always would have preferred it was something like Quantum of Solace. You know, Quantum was going to be the Spectre of this James Bond uh, franchise, but, uh, you know, that movie tanked so poorly, they decided to make an actual Spectre Spectre. Uh, and Quantum is part or linked to the Spectre group, but, uh, you know, so I just didn't like it, especially since I'm a comic book fan, and I figure at some point there's going to be a Spectre movie based on that uh, superhero. Uh, so I would have preferred if it had some type of an adjective or special term with Spectre. Uh, so that's one thing. Another thing is, in this movie, Spectre doesn't mean anything. You know, in the classic sense, Spectre uh, meant, meant something. Each letter meant something, with R being revenge. I always find it interesting that Revenge was part of that uh, big secret organization's name. But in this one, Spectre is just Spectre. You know, Spectre is just the big group. Uh, and it doesn't mean uh, anything with far as the lettering. Maybe there was a scene that's supposed to have it, but it's not in there. And that's a big letdown. I mean, that's one of the things that makes Spectre interesting. Just like S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, even though uh, you don't always say the whole letters of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know that they all mean something. And in the Iron Man film, it even makes fun of how it's this complicated uh, uh, set of, of words to form the shield. So in Spectre, you know, there's this complicated thing that makes it word Spectre, but it's not in there. So I, that was a letdown. Great opening sequence. You know, opening sequence is fine. But uh, the song, the song for the movie is Writings, the, the Writing on the Wall by Sam Smith. And I'm sorry, it was just okay. It wasn't bad, but it was just okay. It's soft and, quite frankly, forgettable unless you're a Sam Smith fan. I'm not a Sam Smith fan. Not even against Sam Smith. I'm just saying I'm not a Sam Smith fan. Okay, Skyfall. Love that from start to finish. Uh, the Quantum of Solace song. Very cool entertainment. Casino Royale. Fantastic. This one, it's just so soft and quite frankly, forgettable, and, you know, not really memorable because I'm, you know, one of the things I love about watching James Bond movies is hearing the title song throughout the film, and because the writing on the wall was so soft and easy listening, I, you know, I didn't notice it when it was playing in the movie. It probably played a couple of times, but I didn't notice it because it was just so forgettable and, and generic and boring and baseless, so... And Sam Smith, uh, 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 the only thing that's really interesting about that song is how high he gets his voice. He gets his voice very, very high into that song. So, uh, you know, that's interesting for that song. One of the things that disappointed me was David Teacher's character, Hinks. Okay, I have a feeling that this character wouldn't be as important to the movie if it wasn't played by Dave Batista. Because this character is completely uh, unamazing. He's just this big guy that says one word at, when he gets his comeuppance. But other than that, he doesn't say a word. He doesn't give orders. He doesn't say, you know, do this or that. He is totally forgettable. If it wasn't played for Dave Bautista, uh, it, he would have just been some ordinary thug. Uh, and if it wasn't played for Dave Bautista, you know, if it was got some type of UFC fighter or some uh, other big guy like the, like the, say like the next Arnold Schwarzenegger or something like that. That's the only why, reason why anyone will remember this character. This character's name isn't even said in the movie, which is uh, Hinks, H-I-N-X. So I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, he has a great intro. Uh, Spectre is having a meeting. James Bond killed one of the main uh, members of Spectre, so they need to replace it. So this one guy says, yeah, I want to be that spot. I'm with that spot. Then, uh, Blofeld, and yes, Blofeld is in this. I'll get to that also. Blofeld says, okay, who wants the spot? Or, or I'm sorry, anyone challenges? And then uh, Dave Batista. I'm just going to call him Dave Batista because you're not going to call him the actual title uh, of the name of the character in your movie. But I, can, I feel free to call him by the actor because that's the only reason why anyone's going to remember this because it was made by Dave Batista. And Dave Batista was in Guardians of the Galaxy, which was this major super blockbuster last year. So that's why uh, he's given any type of real attention instead of just being a, a random thug in a suit. So anyway, Dave Bautista walks in, and he literally picks the guy up, kills him right on the spot, 
and then you know tosses him down and takes his seat and everyone else inspector is like okay that's his spot now and it's like okay that's very cool that's very scary that's very dynamic but if he's got that much clout to make get literally a seat at the table just by going up and killing a guy then he's going to be more than just a, a, a thug that goes around beating people up and kidnapping people. He's going to give out orders. He's going to make plans. He's going to scheme. He's going to manipulate. He's not just going to be some random thug because the guy he replaced was clearly not some random thug. He was some this old senior guy who's like, I'm going to do it right. No more amateur night. No, this is going to be serious. And then uh, Batista hulks, hulks, walks in and he has these metal things on his uh, fingertips and he squeezes the guy's head and he squeezes the guy's eye and then snaps his neck. And it's like, that's really cool. And then after that, he's just a thug that chases Bond all over the world. Bond's doing his thing. And next thing you know, there's Dave Bautista. Or oh, Bond's doing more of his thing. There's Dave Bautista. Uh, the big fight on the train. There's this wonderful fight on the train. This is a cool sequence. But it's like, uh, he, he gets his come up and he gets defeated. And it's like, you never see him again. And I'm thinking he's going to come one more time because earlier in the movie, uh, he went through the window of a car. Like, uh, there was this big chase scene in the snowy mountains, which ends with uh, Dave Bautista's character going through the windshield of a car, and he's still fine, and he gets back up. So I'm wondering, okay, is he a cyborg? Are those metal things part of uh, some type of endoskeleton? Or is he just some somehow this big tough guy that can somehow go through a, the front of a, a window and still get up and, and be a menace uh, later on? It's never said. Maybe in the next movie his his character will come back, and if it does, maybe they'll actually say the character's name. But uh, you know that's never explained. It's like Jaws. You knew. You, I mean, Jaws didn't say a word until uh, the last moments of his uh, other appearance of his last appearance. But still, you got some personality from him. You got a little personality from Ajab. Ajab doesn't say anything, but he's introduced as Ajab. You see what he can definitely do. He is a, a menace. He like even when he fights James Bond, there's a bit of the personality and uh, uh, you know a bit of teasing and a, and a bit of uh, banter. Whereas just Batista, just like mm, it's just it's just some silent guy who's big and beats people up. Oh, and that train sequence. The the fight is ridiculous because they're just beating each other up all over the train. But as soon as Dave Bautista's character appears, everyone else in the train disappears. Like, where's other people? What happened to other people? Because before Dave Bautista's character comes in, James Bond is having a drink with uh, the main lady of the story. And uh, they t have a toast, uh, which means that the waiter just came and gave them their drinks. Uh, the scene opens up uh, where uh, the lady is coming in and there's other people on the, uh, in the dining car. And then uh, they get their drinks, and next you know, Dave Bautista is attacking them, and then there's this big old fight, and there's no one else on the train. They wind up falling through, like, uh, two or three different cars, and you never see any other people. You never see, like, the wait staff. You never see security. You never see other passengers. They just all disappear, and there's this big old fight. And it's like, what happened to everybody? Why is no one reacting? When I was going to say, oh, my God, who's this giant guy fight, fighting this other guy? What's going on? They're banging and busting. They're literally breaking through walls. I mean, it's, it's, it was like I was watching a WWE match, the way that things were just breaking through tables and breaking through walls and various other things like that. Uh, so it was it was exciting, but it's like, I'm thinking, you know, where is everybody? What happened to all the people that just disappeared? Why aren't there other people in this scene? If it wasn't played by Dave Bautista, uh, it's probably why he was given such a great intro and a literary seat at Spectre, the, you know, the organization that's super important and super intelligence and super secrets that he can have a major role in it, yet not say a word. And he has some things on his uh, fingertips that might or might not be uh, cybernetic limbs. And he might be some type of a robot or a cyborg or something. But again, we don't know. So maybe it'll come up in the next movie. But if not, the only reason why anyone's going to remember this character at all is because it was played by Dave Bautista. I was expecting them to be like the next uh, uh, Mayday. Mayday played by the great Grace Jones, who was uh, the lieutenant of Max Zorin, the Christopher Walken character. Uh, that was like my uh, favorite James Bond movie. Uh, and yeah, he's not the next Mayday. He's not the next uh, Stamper from uh, uh, the Pierce Bronson, uh, yeah, Pierce Bronson age. Uh, he is not the next odd job. He's not the next Jaws. He's just some big guy that was played by Dave Bautista, and that's the only re reason why anyone's going to remember. 
But moving on. Uh, the next was um, Monica Bellucci. Now, I'm happy anytime Monica Bellucci's on the screen, okay? So uh, I knew she wouldn't have a major role in the movie, and that's fine. But uh, in the movie, she plays the wife uh, who becomes widow of one of the people that James Bond killed. James Bond kills the guy that M told him to kill, and uh, M says, make sure you attend the funeral. He goes to the funeral, and he sees that the widow isn't fully mourning him. Like, you know, she's uh, sort of sad, but, you know, she's not bawling her eyes out. So he introduces himself at the uh, funeral, and then she goes away, and then she goes to her home, and she's expected to be killed by uh, Spectre agents. But James Bond kills the Spectre agents, and she's like, well, why would you do that? You know, you might as well get out of here. Uh, you know, all your best to do is five minutes. And then uh, they wind up having sex. And now I know that James Bond is supposed to be able to seduce practically any woman, but he does actually seduce the women. You know, he talks to them. He, you know, plays tricks on them. He manipulates them. He flirts with them first, and you know, and and said, you know, seduces him. Even in the first uh, Chris Bronson uh, uh, Golden Eye, uh, there's a scene where he's uh, driving the car. And uh, he's being evaluated by this woman, and he's driving all crazy, and he gets wound up in this uh, uh, car race with this uh, villainess. And the evaluation is like, no, stop this car, stop this car, you're ridiculous, you're crazy. But throughout that scene, they're flirting with each other, where he's Bond is flirting with her, and she's just trying to hope that she survives. And at the end, like, he's like, you know, he leans over and he pops up, uh, he has some champagne, and, you know, it gets into the seduction. But in here, Bond kills the two assassins. She goes into the the back into the house like you know all you're doing is be, best five minutes, and Bond starts to pour a drink like you know like you know get out of here and he just throws it down and starts pulling himself towards her and put and just starts leaning up on her and just start you know getting all close and manipulative and talking to her and kissing her and then she starts kissing him. Now it's set up that she and her husband had a uh, strange relationship that the husband was more dedicated to Spectre than her. But still, it's like from the woman's perspective, this guy might be a maniac. This guy is nuts and you are afraid for your life. You are expecting at any moment more Spectre agents to come kill you, yet you're about to go make out and then have sex with this guy you know zero about other than he saved life a moment ago. He could be uh, another Spectre agent that just wants to, to, to seduce you before he kills you. He does, he does approaches, you know, and, and gets up all on her body and starts kissing her, starts undressing her, and, you know, they have sex, and it's like, that's not seduction, that's, 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 like, porn, that's porn, okay, you know, when the, the pizza guy, or the delivery guy, or, or whatever comes over, you know, I need my, uh, sink fix, and, you know, he pulls out something, oh, how can I ever repay you, oh, I think I know a way, and bounce, watch, that's practically what happens here, you know, she, she you know, hey, I saved your life. Oh, I might be killed in five minutes from now. Well, we better have a drink. Oh, you know, I, I'm, I didn't have much time with my husband. My husband was more dedicated to, to, to his work. Well, that's too bad for him. And then, I'm like, what? By the way, the, the, the Spectre just don't come in that five minutes. They, 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 they do have sex, and then the next morning or the next hour or whatever, you know, whenever he's done, he's like, okay, here's a number called Felix Slider. We don't get to see Felix Slider, at least he's mentioned. Now, as far as we know, the Monica Bellucci character, maybe she uh, lived to be protected by Felix Slider. Maybe she got killed by the Spectre agents who I guess were entrapped that whole time. But uh, yeah, we don't see her character again. He's like, hey, thanks for the quick tip about uh, you know, the secret organization. Here's a card. I'm out of here. You know, maybe you'll live, maybe you're not, but your, your character's done. And it's like, and we never see her again. She's never spoken of again. It's just ridiculous. That's a total waste. I mean, like I said, I love seeing Monica Bellucci. Uh, so I'm happy to see Monica Bellucci. But yeah, you know, just a waste. I wasn't suggesting that was a porn scene. Just banking on, well, he's James Bond. He can seduce any woman, but he does need to actually seduce them, okay? That was a porn scene. Which leads me to the uh, 
the next girl, the main girl, is played by Leah Sidukes. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm burning. I'm just terrible with that name. But anyway, she plays a character named Doctor uh, Madeline Swan. And this person is actually uh, the daughter of a, a different assassin of Spectre. Uh, 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 James Bond goes to find a villain from one of the previous movies. He, uh, the villain says, okay, I'll, he basically says, I'll help you as long as you protect my daughter. And, and he agrees to protect the daughter. Uh, the, the Spectre guy uh, kills himself uh, because he knows that any moment Spectre is going to kill him anyway. If Spectre doesn't kill him, uh, he's going to be stop a poison that Spectre set up for him to die uh, slowly or whatever. That's something ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, uh, he, you know, okay, so she's the daughter of an assassin. Uh, so at first, you don't know that uh, she's capable of taking care of herself. You just figure this is just another little dance in her stress. But you learn that uh, you know, she knows how to handle a gun. She can take care of herself. She's not, not the level of James Bond or a secret agent, but you know she's not going to shy away from danger or anything like that. Uh, for some reason, the James Bond character and she fall in love, or at least she falls in love with him. Um, you know, they meet. She's like, you know, she, James Bond finds her, and she's like, you know, how'd you find me? Get out of here before, you know, you know the Spectre agents come. Uh, the Spectre agents, of course, come. They try to kidnap her. James Bond saves her. That's the whole big chase sequence in the uh, snowy uh, plains. And then later on, they wind up on the train, and then they uh, defeat Dave Batista together. And uh, she's like, oh, well, what should we do now? And the next scene, they're making out, making out heavily. Okay, fine. Well, that makes a little more sense to James Bond. They actually spend some time together first before they hop into bed with you or you know whatever type of bed is on the train. Uh, then they get off the train. Uh, they're uh, they're waiting around. They get picked up by Spectre. Uh, and this is the classic case of you know the, the main villain wants to talk to James Bond and tell his plan and and you know have a banter with James Bond instead of just killing the guy right on the spot. Uh, he takes James Bond and the girl to one of his uh, secret big, big bases, and I do like the the, the design of the base. I, I, that's actually one more positive I'll, I'll I'll toss in there that the I like that there was a giant villain base. I I, I missed those days and days over the giant villain base. He sort of had that in Skyfall with his uh, super super secret uh, computer place, but no, I like the idea of a giant base with a bunch of henchmen and tech men and servicemen and, and, and women. There are a couple of uh, uh, service women in there. Uh, so that was a nice thing. And eventually, Blofeld starts torturing James Bond. And uh, as she's being tortured, she runs over to him and, and like she thinks like, uh, uh, you, know, she, you know, she's worried for him. And she says, I love you. I'm like, what? Why do you love him? I, I, I mean, I know James Bond. You know, he, like I said, he's you know the lore is he can seduce any women, and a lot of women get seduced. But love, fall in love. Why? There is no reason or setup in this movie to explain why they fall in love. I didn't really buy it in Casino Royale. But at least in Casino Royale, Bond and Vesper spend time together. They banter. They learn about each other. Vesper uh, gets attacked, uh, and you know she and Bond consoles her in the shower. You know they actually interact, and you see it on screen, and you, and you feel some type of uh, tension and enjoyment between them. Of course, I also didn't because well, of course it happens so fast, so that's one reason why I don't buy it. The other reason why is that this Vesper was also somehow protecting her boyfriend, so somehow she's in love with James Bond, even though she's also trying to protect her boyfriend. But anyway, the point is. There's a build to explain why they, to, the Bond and Vesper, fall for each other. We're in here. This is like, okay, uh, you, I met you out of nowhere. You saved my life. Then you saved my life again. We had sex. And then we uh, hang out this villain lair. And now, also, I love you. And there's no real build up or banter or explanation with it. It just doesn't make any sense for her to be in love with him within the context that you see in the movie. So maybe there's like an extra hour to this where they actually do have some interactivity to explain why they fall for each other and fall in love with each other. Uh, and it's not the first time James Bond has, has been in love. I mean, on a Majesty's Secret Service, uh, Bond falls in love and gets married. 
but again, there's build up with those characters. Here, there's no build up. They, you know, they just she just falls in love with him. And after they escape the big uh, secret base, James Bond goes off to uh, defeat Blofeld, and she's like, you know, he's like, are you not coming? I said, no, I, I, I know uh, where this is going. I know who you are. I know what you are. So I'm going to ask you to choose, but I don't want to be part of that world anymore. So it's like, okay, Bond has to decide, does he go out to Blofeld or does he stay with the girl? Of course, he goes out to Blofeld. He has to you know, save the world and defeat the villain. Uh, and and uh, the girl winds up again getting kidnapped and saved. But uh, at the end of the movie, she chooses to go off with her. Like, okay, once Blofeld is defeated, um, you know, and the world is saved and everything, uh, he decides to go off and live happily ever after, hopefully with uh, this daughter of an assassin. The idea is that, okay, she's a daughter of an assassin, so she knows his world, she know, you knows the secrets or, you know, how tough it is to have that kind of lifestyle. So they'll be a good match with each other. But again, there's no bills and no payoff for that relationship. You know, especially since early in the movie, James Bond literally seduced some widow uh, and, let, and kicked her to the curb and just said, hey, I'm not, you know, not going to protect you. Call this number and hopefully the Spectre agents won't get you before my buddy, my American agent, will somehow you know, protect you <laughs> in this uh, European country. Uh, you know, you know, or in past movies where James Bond, you know, loves and leaves him for some reason. This girl, he wants to go off and ride off into the sunset, uh, and that just does not make any sense. That's another big disappointment. Uh, the biggest disappointment would be Hans Blofeld, uh, played by Christoph Waltz. Now, the character during promotion of the movies would say that no, he's not Blofeld. He's not Blofeld, even though I expect he's not Blofeld. Uh, but no, he is Blofeld. What happens is um, James Bond, when he was an orphan, he was taken in by like a neighbor or a family friend or somebody uh, and raised for like two years. And that family friend also had a son named uh, Franz Obenhauser or something like that. Uh, so they wound up knowing each other when they were kids. And uh, this Franz Obenhauser uh, apparently got jealous that... Uh, his dad was having more uh, love and attention for James Bond, winds up uh, killing his dad, and then grows up and he changes his name to the uh, Blofeld, the Ernst Starville Blofeld. So he is Blofeld, he just that his character is also Franz Obenhauser or whatever. He, now, I will say, Christopher Wolf, he does great with what he's given, but the problem is, he seems to be more interested that he's Blofeld uh, as opposed to James Bond. Like, uh, James Bond, even though he knows this guy from long ago, he's like, he's just, okay, you're just a nuts villain I gotta kill. You know, as soon as I get the opportunity to kill you, or at least find out what your big plan is and kill you, you know, that's fine. Whereas Blofeld, he wants to banter, he wants to sort of reminisce, he wants to bring up past. He's like, yeah, I'm the author of all your pain, all the women that you love, all the tragedy that's happened to me in the past couple of years, I've been the ultimate puppet master, which again makes no sense. Uh, it makes no sense that this guy who somehow in charge of this evil organization would spend so much time manipulating things behind the scenes to kill this one guy that he apparently is so jealous of that he got that he decided to kill his father. Uh, you know, they're just it's, it's one of those, well, we want to make Spectre the big, big, big ultimate villain danger. So we're going to somehow loosely link all the past movies. And there's a scene where James Bond is chasing down uh, Blofeld. And he's in the old uh, destroyed MI6 building. And there's pictures of all the various scenes for the past movie. All the villains for the past movie. And it's like, yeah, somehow he's been manipulating things from behind the scenes. They've been in charge. Yet he just can't kill off this one guy, this one James Bond. I find that hard to believe. I also find it hard to believe that a guy who creates Spectre, when he is introduced, when he he's in shadow, he comes into the meeting, everyone stands up, everyone's silent, he sits down, uh, and everyone's, everyone is silent, everyone hands up every drop of uh, uh, word that he says. Even later on in the villain lair, uh, what happens, uh, he wants to show a video to uh, Madeline Swan of his father committing suicide in front of James Bond, 
And when he does that, he pushes the button, and turns out all the life, that everyone just stands up and turns around, that just totally drops what they're doing, whatever world domination plan, who have just drops it, stands up and turns around. For someone to have that kind of influence and discipline and, and, and command all these dozens of people to follow his uh, evil plans, I, I just find it hard to believe that he would dedicate so much of his time on a petty revenge. I mean, yeah, I know, I guess that's where the R in, uh, in Spectre comes from, for revenge. But it's like, you know, James Bond, oh, he, 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 my daddy liked him more, so I hate James Bond. Instead of just killing him outright, as soon as I get the chance, I'm going to banter with them. I'm going to reminisce. I'm going to uh, make some weird cuckoo bird an analogy. I'm going to torture him with, <clears throat> with this crazy brain thing. I'm going to treat him to fancy food. I'm going to give him some new clothes to wear. Uh, I was like, okay, you know, let's talk. Hey, there's a meteorite that's made this big crater for some reason that's never really uh, explained or brought up or used just yet. Tuck the meter if you want. And James Bond's like, yeah, I just know you. I'm still going to kill you. And that's it. And it's like, but yeah, how is it that this guy who commands all these people to do all these things? Well, I mean, think about it. Spectre. He says, okay, who wants to challenge? Dave Batista comes in, kills the guy on the spots, takes that person's place. And that's how Spectre works. So why doesn't uh, Dave Batista just walk over? To, uh, to Blowfield and kill Blowfield. Or why does, does anyone kill Blowfield? Why are these guys like the Sith? They're constantly trying to kill each other. And that's how it works. Because that's pretty much how the Sith works. You, uh, you know, you kill your master, you become the master. But anyway, it's just ridiculous that this super organization has spent so much time uh, trying to kill James Bond and to find out that James Bond, like, oh yeah, I've known James Bond when he was a kid. And we had this big old past of history. And I want to dedicate all these resources. And so I just kill him now. Kill him now. Like, you know, Scott Evil. Why don't you just kill him now? Get to get him. Boom. Dead. Done. So I was just so disappointed. I was disappointed by Blofeld. I was disappointed by the Batista. I was disappointed by the use of Monica Bellucci. I was disappointed by the song. Uh, and, and it just felt longer. I mean, it is uh, mathematically the longest of the Daniel Craig Bond movies. But it just felt longer, and it, I'm sorry, this just drops the ball. The opening sequence, uh, it features a fight on a helicopter. Uh, James Bond needs to kill the, the assassin, so he, he chases him down, he chases him onto a helicopter, and during his fight with the assassin, he attacks the pilot. I mean, the pilot's just trying to fly the helicopter, and all of a sudden, Bond starts punching on the pilot, and it's like, you do know he's flying the helicopter, right? And so it winds up that the helicopter is turning and crazy and going on and on and Bond is still fighting the, 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 the uh, assassin and fighting the helicopter guy. Like every time he gets a chance, he attacks the helicopter guy. And then after he defeats the, the, the assassin, he doesn't like take out his gun or something like land, land the helicopter or, you know, I'm taking the helicopter or, you know, or knocks out. He just, he starts choking the guy. It's like, he's flying the helicopter. I know you're James Bond, but still, you, you, you are mortal. Okay, you will die if this thing crashes and blows up. Why are you attacking the, the helicopter pilot? Maybe he would land if you told him to, but you know, all of a sudden you're attacking him, trying to kill him, and it's like, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's ridiculous that he's fighting the guy. It's ridiculous that this you know, helicopter is bouncing all the right place. It's ridiculous that the James Bond kills him. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's just a mess. It's a case of, they know what needs to be done. They have all the ingredients. Okay, we need hot chicks. We need a uh, uh, seduction. We need a cool car chase. We need a cool car. Uh, they do have a gadget in it. They need some banter with Money Penny. They need some banter with Q. Uh, they need a little banter with M. We need to somehow link Bond with uh, Spectre in the past movies. And Blofeld, who's not Blofeld, but is Blofeld, so we don't totally blow our, our uh, big reveal for the uh, media and promotion. Uh, but yeah, they have all the parts there, but it's just not enough. It's just the bare minimum. It's just bare basic. It's almost paid by numbers to a fault. And wrapping up this movie, Spectre gets a C. It's just okay. All right, that's my review slash rant. Uh, Spectre, the 2015 James Bond movie starring Daniel Craig. 
Hopefully the next one will be better, and maybe that'll just be the pattern of uh, the Daniel Craig Bonds movie. It will be good, bad, good, bad. Hopefully the next one good. Um, in the meantime, I'm High Heel Knight. Please subscribe to my channel, and remember, find inspiration everywhere.